so today we are going to uh, do our final topic in database uh, that is uh, views and uh, access control okay security so let's first discuss the views then we'll come back to the uh, security right. so in the very first day we discussed that we can look at database or so understand database using ANSI Spark 3 tier architecture where we have the external tier or the user tier, conceptual or the logical tier and the physical or the internal tier. So we have been working on the conceptual layer so far, creating tables or relations, relationships, right? Then how to query those data, insert, update, delete. So, so we are working on the table, right? Or the relationships. We never discuss anything about physical layer other than the gentle introduction. We didn't discuss anything about this. Okay. So this one we will be mainly focusing on your left semester three. You have data management subject. So there we are pretty much not 100%, about 50% of our focus is this one. So the external layer, why we didn't discuss, the main reason is this is covered by other subjects. Right. So external layer means the UI. So you have learned Java Sync, you have learned Java FX, and this semester you are learning HTML, CSS, right? Of course, the next year only you will be able to connect your web tier to the database because PHP is in your semester three. So anyway, it will be done in your semester three. So therefore, we were not that interested about the external layer in this subject because it, it is discussed by other subjects but today we are going to discuss one concept in that external layer which is more related to databases so those are called views okay. those are called views okay so when we say external layer we are talking about we uh, forms reports screens dialog boxes etc because that is how the users work with your database so they don't come and look at your tables they are not going to write sql queries okay so they will be interacting with uh, pretty much forms screen reports etc pdf reports etc but there is only one concept which is related to external layer but we develop it in the database because this is not database this is and web development, mobile development. But there's one concept which is related to external layer, but we make it in database. So those are called views. So that is our topic today. Okay. So some people consider view as sort of an in between. Okay. Because it's not 100% external or 100% conceptual. So it's, it's database oriented, but it's a concept more into the external layer. But anyway, we use are in the database, okay? Database, okay? Whereas the other applications, such your Swing or .NET or web, they are not in the database, either web server or client machines, okay? Right. Right, so what is a view? So work view, you can think of view as a virtual table. It looks like a table, but there's no table like that. It's basically gathering data from other tables. Of course, table is a conceptual or logical view. Okay. So view, now one way of looking at view is it is say there are different different people, right? Managers, operators, right? Different different people are there interested in your application, your database. So their view means how they want to look at it or how they are given the access or how they are given the view of the database is called a view, okay? So this is the accountant's view. This is the data entry operator's view of the database. This is the HR manager's view. So likewise, this is the CEO's view. So we can have different, different views, okay? Query is not a main concept. So actually query is uh, just a programmatic thing. So therefore when we uh, divide it into different, different layers, 
we don't consider query because query is used to communicate. So you can think of query as something we use to communicate external layer and conceptual layer. Okay, external layer and conceptual layer because your your PHP web pages will be communicating with the database using query SQL. Your Swing, your JavaFX, your .NET, C Sharp will be communicating with the uh, tables and of course views using SQL. So therefore SQL, you don't know to take it to a, this layer or that layer, it's a communication mechanism. It's basically facilitate this communication. Okay, right. So I hope uh, it's clarified, right. So now, uh, so view is how a particular user look at the table or how the particular user is given the view of the database, not table, database, okay? Right. So why do we need views, right? So many advantages are there. Number one is it increase the usability because your HR manager don't want to look at all the data in the database, right? So he's interested in certain things, maybe employees details. Whereas the finance manager is more interested in financial related. The production managers are production related. So therefore, rather than giving access to entire thing, which is in a way unnecessary, in a way it's burden to the, the, the users because they, are, they, they see unnecessary things also. And also it's a poor security also, because you're not supposed to look at that data, but you can see it. So therefore security wise, the views, because we can restrict what you can see, what you can access. Security wise, it is better. User friendly device, user, usability device also is it, it is better because use, when users see only the real data which is relevant to that person's job role, uh, it's easier for that person. Otherwise, we know there's something called information overloading, right? And also when it comes to maintainability and upgradability, it's the use of views is very important because then uh, these end users are given access to these views. So views are getting data from the underneath tables. So you now you are, these user interfaces are not directly bound to the tables. So then we can change the table structures and other things uh, without directly affecting the uh, use interfaces because use interfaces are bound to the views. It doesn't mean that any change can be done, but certain level of independence is there at certain levels of independence is there uh, for us to work with. Otherwise, if you are directly, if, if our Swing client is directly to communicating with the database tables, if we change the table, we have to change these queries. But uh, if our Swing client is bound to the view, and we is bound to the tables. When we do change to the tables, sometimes you don't have to do the update because if it is a, something not related to that view, or maybe we just have to change the views, not the client, not the client. Of course, if, if that change need to be reflected to the client, we have to change it. But if the client is not required to notify that, or that change is not relevant to the client, you don't have to change anything. Okay, because you are bound to the view, uh, UI is bound to the view and view is bound to the table. But view is in the database side. So changing the view is easier than changing the client port. Okay, client port. All right, so when it comes to views, uh, there are two types of views. Or we, or we can say we can implement views in two different ways. Okay, we can implement views in two different ways. So we call it query modification and view materialization. So the most widely used approach is query modification. So this is the one that we use most of the time, 90% of the time, so the query modification. In query modification, what happens is, so remember view is something a particular user or particular functionality needs. So this view is something like a table. That is why we use the word virtual table. It's like a virtual table, okay? 
but the table is getting or that virtual table is getting the data from underneath tables one no more tables one no related tables right so query modification means your view is just a concept your your view is loaded with data from the tables from the table okay actually there is nothing called view as well as a reality but it's only virtually there's a concept called v okay uh, we can think of it as a table but in reality there is no such table because that table is getting the data from uh, that virtual table is getting the data from uh, the other underneath the real tables so then we say it's query modification the second approach is view materialization in view materialization when we create a view we actually create a table or at least a temporary table okay actually it's not a table it's a temporary table uh, which is created when someone query the view that temporary table is created okay and that data is in there even you can save it to the disk as well the data okay so so then when you want to get some data actually you are getting that data from some sort of a, a table not a virtual table okay but that table is getting data from the the real tables but it that table is getting the data earlier that virtual table or just a concept okay so both the approaches has process and cons so if query modification no extra disk space is needed because there's no table it's virtual but in view materialization uh, you need extra disk space because this is also table right which you can save the, your data but whenever you save data to this table this uh, this view materialistic view you have to save those changes to the real tables as well so there's sort of a duplication is also there so therefore you need extra disk space here you don't need extra disk space okay but when it comes to performance especially retrieval so this can be a little bit faster because it's you are getting it from a table here when you take it from the sort of a uh, your view is a materialistic one but here it's a concept when you query something from the view actually you have to get it from the tables okay still i know you may be little bit confused think about it think about it think about it of, of course the last session is not going to be as simple as the first session right now so next to, you are planning to visit your level two that is higher diploma level so higher diploma is not going to be as simple as your diploma level of course the workload is less but it's we expect higher level of seriousness okay right so here the retrieval is faster but you need extra disk space here you don't need extra disk space but data retrieval can be a little bit slow but that is retrieval is faster but when it comes to insert update actually it is a little bit slower because you have to update or insert to your materialistic view as well as the real tables materialistic view means some sort of a table and therefore you have to up, do multiple updates multiple inserts multiple deletes of course the view is faster but other retrievals are slow here uh, other retrievals are other operations are faster but view can be a little bit slow and of course you don't need uh, extra space so most of the time uh, because of some extra complications we don't go for view materialization we go for query modification okay right now let's see how to create a view now we discussed about how to create tables how to hold the table how to drop a table okay so create table is the sql uh, again a data uh, data definition language or ddl okay so just like create table we can say say create view then you have to give the view name then what are the attributes and in that view then you have to say as you have to write a select query right you have to write a select query so once you get used to it it's very easy but initially you have to 
you will be a little bit confused why there's a select query when you are creating a view. Okay. And assume that we have this table. Okay. Assume that we have this table. Uh, okay. I'm just uh, logging to the. Okay. Let's let me start my SAM server. So today's session is a practical session, just like SQL. So you can do it parallelly. Hope you have the database with you now. Uh, same one D P S one D B one S. So sorry S two B one for batch one S two B two for batch two. So today I'm going to use uh, S two batch two database. Okay. Same same S two batch two database. Uh, so I have started it. Anyway, it doesn't matter which database I use. Uh, say localhost. So I put PHP my admin. So I'm going to use S2B2 database. Okay. Pretty much the same thing. Both are having the same tables, I think. Employee and department, maybe slightly different columns. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. I will be using this one. Uh, okay so those who are in the batch one also they can use it uh, you can use uh, your tab the tables okay right so now i have a table for employee okay, table for employee and i have few data okay few data. now i'm going to create a view i'm going to create a view uh, okay let me create the view from the command prompt so then it's much more confident for you Say mysql minus u root. Right. Show databases. Now you must be really familiar with these things. Right. So I'm connecting to use s2b2. Okay. Right. Four tables. So I have the employee table. Let's say select all from employee. Now it must be just a normal thing for you, okay? If you have done a proper job, proper studying. Right. So I have the table. Now I'm going to create a uh, view, okay? So I'm using Let me close this. So this is another head. Ports. I'll be sharing a code with you both, okay? I'm using the Notepad++. Right, we use right. So this is how you create a view. Create view. Okay. So then you have to give your field. Okay. If you have any questions, please ask. Good. Don't keep any questions with you. And right. you have to give it, give it a name. So first we have to give it a name. Say, let's say, my view my employees just say my employees just to give it a name okay uh, then you have to say as right, as uh, then you have to write down your query right so let's say select all from or you can say which fields you want also says say, say Let's write this. 
uh, I, I will be taking only employee ID, name, salary. I'm not taking date of birth okay, and department ID. Okay. So employee ID, assume that we are not giving access to the uh, date of birth. Maybe the user is not interested. Okay. Name, salary. Or you can just say star if you're giving giving all access to all the fields salary if you feel like you must not give that user the access to salary we can just remove it so then that user can't access the salary see the salary is also uh, salary say department type from employee if you want you can even uh, have a where condition say we are giving access only to the employees in a particular department so then that also can be restricted okay so i can say employee uh, id say department id is not now that means those who are belong to the or if you are the department one de uh, manager, I can say where the department ID equal one. So that is how you re restrict. Okay, let's do that also. Where department ID equal one. So that means that we will have only department one employees. Okay, no department two employees. Okay, right. So now we are done. So now let's execute this. So we are creating a view, not a table. Table is there. Uh, we are creating a view, new view. Okay. So let's paste it. Okay. S2. Uh, I made a spelling mistake. E M P L O I double D not employees. Uh, that is okay. Uh, this one, uh, this one, a uh, table name. This one I can give any name. Okay, like I just changed the table name because uh, th there was a mistake. Okay, and it's a query. Okay, query. Okay. Now, if you do show tables, you can see your view is also like a table, but actually this is not a table. What you create. It was a view, but your view is pretty much acting like a table now. Okay. So now I can do whatever I do with tables to my view. I can insert, update, delete, right? Say select all from say employee. That is a table. Okay. So we got all the records. Right. But what about select all from uh, my employees? So obviously it is it is going it is not going to have the date of birth field, and also it is going to be only employees in the department one, because when we create the view, we we created like that. Okay. Right. Now you can see uh, when I write a select all from that view select all but it contains only department one employees and also date of birth field is not there right date of birth field is not there because when we create the view we restricted okay so if you want you can even insert right you can insert for example uh, say insert into So this one we did select all from my employee right. let's insert insert into my employee i will just go by the values okay let's say columns also let's say that but only thing is now you can't insert a value for the date of birth 
because date of birth is not in your view. Okay, not in your view. Uh, say values. What is the last employee ID we are having? Uh, you have to look at the table because when I when you insert to this fund, you are inserted into the table. Therefore, you can't have uh, duplicate employee IDs. Uh, let's say six. Six. Say Chamari. Say department ID is two. Okay. Now the department ID is sorry, department ID is one. Okay. Now you have to do these things by yourself. Okay. So now let's see. Now this view, I'm inserting into the view. Okay, insert into my employees. Okay, my employees. Okay. This view is my employees. Let me change it to S. You will anyway. We will get error. That is fine because of the spelling mistake. Now I'm writing the correct one. Right now, let's see. It says query okay. Right, one row affected. Now let's write a select all from our view. This is our view. Now we can see the view has three records. Three records. Now it's not only in the view because view is just a view. Actually, our insert is uh, though we insert it to the view, actually, the insert is to the table. So, therefore, if I type select all from, remember, there was no summary record earlier, there were only five records. Now, if I type select, oh, now you can see uh, there is six record. And since we didn't touch the date of birth, it is null. Luckily, the date of birth field is nullable field. Otherwise, we are going to get error also. Okay, so that is how you do it. That is how you do it. Okay. Now let's see. Now, now we can use in the employee table, we can insert records to in any department. But now let's see, can we insert a record to uh, now remember this view is restricting employees to department one. Now let's see whether we can in insert a record to a department two, right? Department two, let's change it to seven so that no duplicate. Let's call it Lalani. Say one lakh 20,000. And now department two, remember this, uh, our my employee views, my employee view is not having this department ID one, okay? But we are trying to insert it to department ID two, okay? This is a valid uh, primary key. Now let's see. Okay, and it says query okay. Now let's, uh, let's insert, uh, let's look at the, our query, our, uh, view okay select all from my employee let's see select all from employee and see whether seventh record is there yes seventh record is there now let's see whether the record is there in our view my employees uh, we added it to the department one no right so the last record sorry the last record is for department two so therefore now you can see that that record is not there it's in the table, but not in the view, not in the view. So why it managed to insert it is actually since we have not done proper security. Uh, actually, this is illegal thing I did because this particular view has access only to the department ID one. Okay. But when you insert to this view, actually it is not in the view. I inserted to this view. But it is not in this view because this view is only limited to department one. So therefore, this is sort of a, not a very good thing to do. Right? 
So you can't see that record, but you can insert that record. That record is there, but you can't see it. You can't see it. Okay, so now let's see whether you can update it. Update. I am updating through the uh, view. My employee. Right, my employee set salary equal to lakh. We are department ID, sorry, employee ID equal seven. So that is, remember this record is not in the view. Okay, not in the view, but I'm updating the view. This record is not in the view, but we manage to insert it through the view. Now we try to update that record. And it's updated, right? So you can see there's no such record you can see as employee ID 7, but still you can update it. Now let's query. Uh, of course, if you query the uh, my employee, you don't see that record, but let's query the employee table. Did I change to, to uh, this one? Okay, so why is it? Okay, now here you can see that when you write it, it says zero rows affected. Now we can see that the insert ha happened, but the update has not happened. Right, update has not happened. And because it is not in your view, you managed to somehow insert it. Since it is not in your view, you can't update it. You can't update it. So still it is old value, old value of 120,000. Though you change it to, right? You change it to uh, employee ID seven salary, you change it to 200,000. Still it says 1,200. Okay, let's see whether we can delete it from the view. Of course, you can delete it from the table. Delete from my employees where employee ID equals seven. Remember, this is not in the view, though we managed to insert it through the view. Let me copy it again. Again, it says zero rows affected. So that means definitely it's not deleted from the table also. Remember the employee ID seven? You can see that you can insert it, but you can't update or delete to even view it. That is good. But inserting is also not a very good thing to do, right? Because you are you have a view to the department one and you are inserting records to the department two. Okay. But anyway, you can't update, delete, or you can even view it. That is good. That is good because it is not in your view. If you want to delete, in, update, delete, uh, you have to go to the original table. Or you have you must have access to the original table. Okay. Right. So I hope. You got what 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 is the reality is okay. Any questions? Right. So no questions, right? Okay, so when it comes to creating views, there are different different ways you can create views. Actually, I use both selection and projection when I create the view because uh, my view is restricting so that some, only some records are there, therefore it's a selection. And also I'm taking only some columns, so therefore it's a projection as well. So therefore my view is actually 
using both selection and projection. It's restrict some to some fields and also it's restrict to some records as well. Okay. So if you are doing if you are only restricting uh, to some records only, and if you are taking all the fields, we say it's a selection no, view. Okay, selection view. So that means you you get only some records, maybe only record of a particular department. Other approaches or other possibilities, you are taking all the records to the view, but you are you are not looking at or you are restricting some fields. You can see DOB field is not there. So then we say it's a projected view. Of, okay, projection view. Or you can combine both together and create a selection and projection view. Okay, so that your view has all those opportunities. Okay. Yes, why insert is possible, I, I will explain it. I'll come back to that. So that is why we have a concept called uh, rest check option. Okay. Right. We'll, we'll come back to that. Right. So we can, when we're creating the views, uh, we can uh, get only some records, we can get only some fields, or you can have some records and some fields. Okay, so that means it's both projected and uh, selected. Okay, uh, and sometimes you can even get the summary. Right, you know, the, we, we remember we did the summary queries, uh, the count, max, mean, right? So those kind of things. So then your view and table has no one-to-one -one matching on records. Now, earlier, your records and here, the records in your view and records in your table are one-to-one. -one. Of course, maybe some fields are missing, but still there's a one-to-one -one mapping between record to record, record to record. But if it is a summary query that you use to create the view, then there's no such one-to-one -one mapping. Okay, for example, this view, create view depth employees. Okay, so now we are saying which fields we are in, uh, the, which fields we are interested, the department code. And so this is the name given to this one. This is the name given to this one. Okay, uh, you can give the names, different names, just like the select query as. Okay, so we refer to the depth in the employee table, depth field as depth code number, depth code, and count star, uh, we, are, we are counting uh, as the number of employees. Now, this is definitely a summary query because we are counting, right, group by department. So that means we have the department name and how many employees are for that department. Okay, how many employees are for that department. So therefore, now the, our view is, something like this, whereas our table is something like this. So now, of course, you can't update this table because it doesn't make sense, right? So if you update the count equal three, uh, do you, how can you make it count equal three? Then we have to insert a record. So you don't have any information about the employee numbers and blah, blah, blah. So therefore, those kind of views, if it is sort of summarized view, summary query, you, you can weave it, but you can't insert, update, delete, right? You can't insert, update, delete to those, okay? So let's see whether MySQL support this, because I don't know whether MySQL really support this feature, because uh, this concept of views are very supported in varying degree, right? Maybe certain things Oracle support, but not MySQL, maybe Microsoft SQL support, but others are not supporting, but in general, the common functionalities are supported by all the databases, okay? So let's uh, let's just see whether this is supported. That is summary query. Say whatever, right? So what? Let's say department ID, okay. and count star from employee uh, group by department. In our table, it is department ID. Uh, 
we can give it any name like department id we take it as dev code let's make it all simple and here we say number of employees okay and let's see whether they allow it I, i'm not very sure whether my sql will allow some queries for views most probably yes Uh, can see there's issue let's say near department id at line five one two three four five oh this one group by two words okay so that is my mistake okay that is my mistake so here also it must be grouped by just give me one minute otherwise i will forget it just let me change that one okay now let's see whether it's work i think work right so now let's see whether this table is there show tables uh, that view is there show tables you show the tables views as well yes my employees is there okay so let's try to select all from sorry debt employees okay what we create is a debt employees debt employees what must be the output uh, 1 1 2 3 2 3 and null 1 1 3 2 3 null 1 that is a count okay so we are taking the count see null 1 1 3 2 3 that is our view that is our view now now you can see that it's no point making update for this one right it's it doesn't make sense because there's no one to one record in the table let's let's try to update and see whether we are getting error message obviously we, are, we must be getting error message say update okay debt employees set now what are the field names n no underscore employee though that is the name i gave let's change it to three uh so, sorry let's change it to four for department code one dep underscore code one now what we have is dep code So that is one field in the so this must not be allowed okay this must not be allowed because it doesn't make sense then of course you have to go and insert a record to the employee table you can see target table employee of the update is not updatable because it doesn't make sense to update okay Right, so this kind of tables you can't update, but we managed to update this kind of tables. This kind of table, uh, of course, if it is within the view, okay. So remember, if it is within the view, I can update. So okay, so I can I cannot update seven uh, because it is uh, not in my view, right? But if now let's do something like that also. Say select all form. Say my employees okay that is uh, the view oh okay so that, that is another question right so what will happen if you delete a view right what will happen if you delete the view now you delete from the your view my employees now let's do the query now we can see three rows affected 
now let's try it. actually i did it like accidentally but unfortunately now what what has what has happened they select all select all from in, uh, say my employees now the view has no data so view has no data means uh, all the department one employees are deleted from the table also okay uh, we had three employees now let's do a actually it happens accidentally employees select all form sorry employee not employees right so now you can see that when you delete record from actually i accidentally delete all the record from the view all the record related to that view is not in the table also okay not in the table also now i have to again insert a record now uh, two three four seven i will be inserting a record saying eight okay. i'm inserting this record again because the, that record is uh, laran is there uh let's call it something else Okay. but id is 8 8 is not there i'm inserting into the view okay now if you type select all from employee rohan is there also if you type select all from my employees okay again it's not in the my employees because i are I added to the department two, so let's make let me make it department one, okay? Because otherwise it's not in the view. Say nine, say Kumar. Now it it must be inserted, and also it is it must be available in the view also. Right. Now let's see whether it's available in the view. Yes, okay. Uh, now now I can update this record because this record is in the view right for example i can say where employee id equal 9 i can change it to 2 lakhs okay now if i type select all from my employees it's 2 lakhs if i type select all from uh, employees also it is 200000 okay right Yeah, we can undo uh, by rollbacking, uh, but if auto commit is on, you can't. If auto commit is on, you can't. I think in uh, by default auto commit is on. Okay, right. Right. So now let's get back to our note. So views can be only taking some selected records taking some selected columns or it can be sort of a summarized view so then you can't update and also it can be taken from joins that means multiple tables your view can be created joining multiple tables that is also possible okay maybe some record from employee and related record something like inner join uh, from the department so that is also possible okay that is also possible uh, let's see whether we can create a view like that. Uh, so that we can get the department name also. Say this department. Yes, it has the name. Okay. And so let's do inner join. Create view, say employee debt. Okay. So we have, so that is debt employees. Uh, this is employee debt, okay. Employee ID, name, salary, department ID, and now let's say name. Uh, there you have to refer to employee, comma, department. Now the name is duplicated. Remember we discussed that. So therefore, uh, name we have to say d dot name. 
or let's call it END. We discuss all these concepts, okay? Uh, he also, just for clarity, we will say E dot. E dot. E dot. Uh, this doesn't matter whether E or D, same connecting table, column, and D dot name. Now, we have to give it a name also because otherwise, again, there's a name conflict. So we'll say as employee ID, e name as, let's say, e name or employee name. E dot salary as let's say salary e dot department id as let's say department id and finally a d dot name as let's say department Name. Okay, so let's see whether we can create this view. So department name must be from D dot. Okay, okay, as D dot name as department. Right now, let's see whether we can create this one. And we are only interested about department ID one employees. Okay, oh, sorry, we have to do, do the join also. We are employee or E dot. Let's call it D dot department ID. E dot department ID equal that is join in a join D dot department ID. Then if you want to buy in the buy an engineering engineering ID current by by Gulland. So let's say and Lapi department one word address restrict color than Mari Balon Ericatino Tadu. Right, no error. So let's write show tables. Uh, employee depne, employee deptino. So let's try to select with a new. Select all from employee debt. And the employee can I in the department ID one only Nick and I win at the name of Wick and I, yeah, Kumara. Right. Now, can we update this table? Well, the department name make update current value. Department name name we update current value salary. Update. Now we are updating this view. Set salary. Equal three hundred thousand. We are let's say who is the employee? Uh, employee ID one. Right. Let's see whether it's possible. What do you think? Possible or not? I am updating the view. Salary set into 300,000 and employee ID, sorry, employee ID nine, okay, nine. And it says one row affected. That means updated, right? So we can even update it, right? We can even update it. Of course, you can update if it is in the view. If it is not in the view, you can't update. And it will update the relevant table, right? So now let's look look at and see whether the salary is updated in the employee table also. 
it has it has to be right nine kumara now is it three hundred thousand yes so the relevant table is also updated okay right so only thing is you can't update delete if it is not in your view through the view then you have to go to the original table or any other view which is having that record okay right so now i hope you have a very good idea about the weeds right so if you want to restrict uh now you can now there's another thing here uh, this now let's i'm getting back to the other view that is uh, say select or oh, show tables Right, so we had that uh, debt employees or my employees. Okay, say select all from my employees. Right. So can I change this employees department ID? To something else then what will happen this view can keep only department id one but can i change the department id of a record which is in this view okay so that means i have to do something like update not the salary department id say department id to two where employee id is uh, nine now that is a funny thing now this the employees belong into the employee id uh, this view employee id nine but the moment you do this update because we are doing the change in the department id uh, this employee will be no longer available to the view because this view is only for department id one employees okay now let's see whether it's allowed right it says now this employee's department is two therefore now this employee cannot be in this view now let's see whether the employees in the view now my employees okay uh, now your view has no records because earlier that record was in your view because that employee is a department one employee but now he that employee is you change it to department two therefore still the employee is there okay still the employee is there in the employee table but not in the view right still the department uh, employee nine must be there you can see but now he is in a different department so therefore you can't uh, access it now, if you want to prevent those kind of things, right? So then you have to do a small change to your view. So we have to say, when you are creating the view, you have, at the end you have to say with check option. When you create a view with the with check option, when you do update, if it is going away from your view, that update will not be allowed. For example, the previous update will be not allowed if we had created the view with with check option that you can try out by your own right create a view with the check option and do, try to do that kind of a update where update result in your record moving out of the view in that kind of situation your mysql is going to give you error saying that it is not allowed okay that do it as exercise okay do it as exercise Right. And also at any time you can drop your view. And remember when you drop a view, it doesn't affect your table. Because view is just a view. So therefore dropping a view does not drop any table or deleting any record. It's just a view is no longer there. Okay. Right. So you can drop it and see. Okay, I'm not going to drop it. Uh, anyway, we have a few views, right? Let's drop one of those. Drop view. You have to say drop view, not drop table. Uh, 
say employee underscore debt. Okay, employee underscore debt. Now, if you type show tables, no longer it must be there. Employee underscore debt is not there because we drop the view. Still, the tables are there, the records are there. Just the view is there, not there. Okay. Right. So that's it about views. Uh, yeah, drop view. Uh, right. So we'll take a small break. After the break, we will be moving to the security. Right. So when it comes to security, uh, it's not only for database. So security is a major concern in any application and at, at any level. So whether it's database or UIO in general, when we say security, we are interested in a few aspects. The number one is availability. So we don't want someone to destroy. Obviously, we don't want someone hack your database and destroy it, delete your data, right? Availability. We want it available. We don't want someone to change it, change the data without our uh, know, knowing. Right? For example, say you are having a database, uh, you are having a bank account. So if you go, if you manage to hack the bank database and change your bank's uh, balance, say one lakh to one million. So then you have more money, right? So bank don't want to want that to happen. So bank will not like to that kind of things happening. Okay. So integrity. We, that, so others must not be able to change it without or without your and uh, provision or whatever, okay? So the third one is confidentiality. So we don't want some sensitive data to be exposed to the third parties. Not even your, your employees. Maybe your database is having customer's passwords. You don't want even your administrators, system administrators to see those passwords because they can, do, they can do, use it for frauds. And also, it's you are exposing someone's privacy information. So therefore, we have to make sure that the resources are available, resources are not changed, integrity, and of course, the confidentiality. Okay. So how to secure a database? Of course, we have to do those things at all level because if it is failed in one level, your system has security issue. So we have to make sure that at every level, these things are guarded. Right. So how to preserve the availability? So the main thing is authentication and authorization. Only authenticated users are given access. So therefore others cannot access it and they are given access only to their relevant data. Right. When I log into the Gmail, Google, I can see my content, my emails. I can't see your email. And of course, if I have a valid username password only I can access to Gmail. So that is authentication. And I can access only my email. That is authorization. I can send email using only my account. That is authorization. So in order to preserve integrity, sensitive data is, uh, sorry, in order to preserve the confidentiality, the sensitive data is encrypted. Right? So we encrypt and save it. If your password is hello123, it is not hello123, which is saved, some other text, con which is converted from converted text of the hello123, which will be converted back and given to the user. But even your database administrator must not be able to see it as hello123. That is encryption, decryption. To prevent integrity issues, related issues, we add some checksums. And we can always double check and see whether uh, the checksum is changed. If checksum is changed, someone has changed it. At least we can detect. 
and non repudiation is someone claiming something not done as done something done as not done say you did the transaction you withdraw money now you are saying that no i didn't withdraw that it must be a mistake from your system so then we must have proof saying that no you you withdraw it that is how you guard against non repudiation that is where we have the logging auditing log files right so in this level we are only going to talk about authentication and authorization we are not going to discuss about hashing encryption auditing okay so we are going to discuss only about authentication and authorization okay right so authentication means only valid user authenticated user can be give, is given access of course when i log in i used remember you can quit so now i have log off now remember when i log in i entered mysql minus u root root is the username so by default the root user's password is blank that is why i'm just entering uh, that is for for learning environment this kind of we are just trying the thing so then that is fine but the moment you go for the production database you definitely you want to change the root data uh, root users uh, password and usually you don't allow applications to connect to the database using root pass your root user account root is a super admin account so you will be creating user accounts and you will be given giving access to those user accounts only so that is authentication with a lot of very less privilege okay so in security there is a concept saying you must give the least required privilege unless it is absolutely needed you don't give that access okay right now in uh, databases obviously we are going to create username your use accounts and we will be giving access to those use accounts only to do whatever the querying update insert etc so then what about authorization okay so let's first see how to create a use account so this is how you create a user create user your username identified by the password okay so that is the sql command so then you can create a user by drop user the username so these kind of things can be done if you have access to doing these things usually the root user has the access then you have to you can do it okay so let's create a say use same to batch to s2 b2 okay i don't know whether this uh, sql is little bit slightly different in different different uh, databases let's see whether create user is allowed or otherwise we will be creating user using c set admin okay my php my admin say let's go to the our sql right so i will be sharing the note uh, my sql code after the class okay say security create user let's say abc say xyz uh, then you have to say identified by password let's say 123 let's see whether this do we have to do any change or as it is it is allowed in my sql i have login using uh, root otherwise the root account have the access to create other user accounts not every user account has access to that 
right so you can see it is not near yeah, one two three identified I D E N D I F I D. So let's see. Okay, let's create it using PHP my admin then. So go to the PHP my admin. I think users must be created without getting to a table. Okay, let's say okay, let's do it here. So here you can see there's something called use accounts. So there are some use accounts created. Uh, let's create it using here. Okay. Uh, then we'll see what is the SQL. Okay. All right. So this is how you create account, add use account. Okay. Let's call it semester two user one. S2 U1. Okay, semester two user one. Uh, say any host or whatever. Okay, any host or let's say local host. Uh, password, I will say one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Let's say one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. Right. So I will give all, I will give no privilege at all. Right. Initially, that user. Uh, and let's see whether we can see the SQL. Can't see the SQL, right? Okay, so let's see. My SQL create user. Let's see what is the problem. What is wrong with our SQL? Create user identified by, I think it's correct, right? Why I'm getting error? Is it this one? Right, maybe it's expecting quotes. Okay, maybe earlier, I think that it's expecting the quotes, I think, okay. Right. Now we have created a user. Uh, the user is called XYZ in this case, okay. Now let's see whether we can see that user uh, from here. Uh, PHP my admin. Uh, remember, use accounts. Don't save. Uh, what is the username we created? Uh, That is so old. Uh, username is XYZ. Okay. See where the XYZ is there? XYZ. Yes, XYZ is there. Okay. So I said this there. Now let's see what are the privileges that uh, user has. Uh, you can see by default, no privilege is there. Just a user. No privilege is given. Uh, it's just a blank user. Okay. Uh, now let's see whether we can log in using that user account. Okay. So this is, I have login using the root. Okay. So let's get another command. Okay. To get another command prompt. So it's very important to do these things practically because in your final year project, you have to do these things. It was a project class, not the Kiki and Hinga Nogi. Project class, not the project class, not the Saliki Yaka, Onagana Gavan, and then Kelevel and Indi. Onagana got a project class card. Then the Kina Ganaka student line in the Kamathi was the Asaran. 
and password so far we did never enter password because by default your root user has no password but here i we give password that is one two three right so therefore minus p without space you have to type the password okay one two three here with space username minus p without space password just remember it okay okay x y z so the access is not given so that means i think because it has not given any access at all okay so let's try to give it some sort of access to the database level at least okay so it's something like this not table level or whatever just access to the database okay and uh, it that user can create users also and now let's see whether we can log it No. Why that that is strange. My SQL minus U X Y Z. Is it correct? The username is X Y Z. Password is one two three. Okay, so for the time being, let's give all the privileges and see whether we can log in. Go. Now let's see whether we can log in for the time being. Ah, the issue is I'm typing the semicolon, right? Yes, that was the issue. Okay, let's remove all the privileges. This is not my SQL, right? Here you don't need uh, semicolon. Yeah, password is semicolon. Right. So I, I just removed all the uh, privileges, right? But still I can log in. Earlier, the, my mistake actually, uh, because I was using the semicolon. Semicolon is used only in uh, my SQL prompt, right? So now, yeah. You are, you are now the user call x y z is connected now let's see whether we can show tables i removed all the privileges just the user is there show show databases so you can see it does it can't see any of the databases and now this super user can see all the databases show this is a root you can see all the databases this one can see only that default database uh, only so that means because i have not given any uh, any privileges okay right so now you know how to create a uh, user account uh, at any time you can drop the user by drop user your username okay uh, the username so then you can drop it okay so right. so any questions on that how to create a user and how to drop a user? Drop user, you, you try it out. Okay, user, Drop user, Drop user, XYZ. X, Y, Z. I, I think the use is already dropped. Okay. Now let's see. Try uh, calculable show database. 
Now we are session again. Now. Then now let's uh, quit and try to come back. Right now let's see whether we can log in. Right X Y Z P one two three. Okay, you can see access denied. Now the user that user is no longer there. Right. That user is no longer there because we drop it. Okay, so let's create. Uh, okay, so now you know how to create a user uh, with the password and how to drop the user. Okay, right. So then there are two ways you can now that is authentication part. That is authentication. Now, if you have a valid username with the password only, you can access the database. Okay. If you don't have a proper username or proper password of that username, you can't access it. So that is what is meant by authentication. Only authenticated users can access. So the second concept is authorization. Just because you log in. That it doesn't mean that you can do all the things in the world. Right? Now you can see that uh, when I log in using that XYZ user, I can't even see any database right? because I have not given any access to those. Okay. Now let's again log in. Okay. Now let's again create that table uh, user. And I get created and now I should be again logging. So now the user is back. And now I can log in. But if you look at show databases, no access by default, no access at all. Okay. So if I give access only, uh, the, that particular user can do certain certain things. Okay, so obviously, therefore, you can't say use s1 b2 or s1 b1 right add access table database right right so now we are moving to the authorization so authorization means giving access to the resources so there are two ways you can provide implement the authorization we call it user base authorization right user base where we can give access to the resources, right? Access to the resources are given to the users, user accounts. Right? So I can say that the user one can access this particular database. User one can access this particular table, right? Maybe I can give access to the employee table, but not to the department table. So that is authorization. You are not authorized to access department table, but you are authorized to access employee table. The second approach is we give access to the roles and roles are assigned to the users. So that is called role-based authorization, which is much more practical. Okay. But let's first look at the user-based authorization, the easy one. Now we have to create some users and some authorizations. Okay. So let's create two users. Okay, so let's say uh, semester two user one identified by one, two, three. Another user called semester two user two. Uh, let's say same thing. Okay, so I'm going to create two users now. I can execute multiple record, uh, SQL commands. Now I have two users, but no privilege, no privilege, right? So therefore, I, I can't even log in, right? I can't even log in. Yes, I can, sorry, I can log in, but I can't, let's quit it. I can't access anything. Okay, so let's try to log in now. U minus U, S2 U1 minus P 1, 2, 3. Is it 1, 2, 3? Yes. Remember, no semicolon, right? But you can't say, see any database also. You show databases. No database. Okay. Just give me one minute. Just give me one minute.
Okay, sorry for that. Okay, right. So now we have created uh, two users, but we have not given any privileges. Okay, right. So let's look at how to give privileges to a user. So that you know, user can access a particular database, user can access a particular tables, etc. Okay, right. So this is how you do it. So now we have created a user. Now you have to grant access privileges. Okay, you have to grant access privileges. Uh, first of all, you have to give access to the database. Then only you can give access to the tables, uh, etc. And again, you can restrict. You can insert, but you can't update. You can query, but you can't update. Likewise, okay. Uh, Right. So I am using the MySQL command to give the basic access, then table wise access, I'm going to give it using the SQL because otherwise it takes a lot of time. Okay. I will say grant and these things I'm going to give the basic things, all the basic things, but I'm not going to give any table level access to this particular database uh, users. Okay. So let me take the two users. Uh, S two B one and S two B two. Okay, so I'm going to give both the okay uh, both the users. Let's take S two B one. Use accounts. Uh, so S two user one. Uh, let's say edit privileges. I am going to give these things, but not in anything like that. Okay, go because it will take uh, time. Otherwise, then I am going back to the use account. I am going for the S two U two, right? S two U two. That use also I am going to give these things. Okay, now at least the users must be seeing the data, uh, seeing the tables. Okay, right? So. Still, you will not see it because those acts, privileges were granted after you log into the session. So, therefore, you have to log out and log in. Okay, quit. Right now, I would say semester two user one. Okay, now let's say show databases. Ah, now we can see. Okay, so let's take another command prompt uh, and connect as uh, semester two, uh, user two, okay. MySQL minus U, S2, U2, minus P, one, two, three, okay. Uh, this is my user two, right? Semester two, user two. This is my semester two, user two. The first one is admin root user semester two user one semester two user two okay so this user also must be able to show data pictures etc right now let's see now let's try to connect to a particular table database say semester two uh, batch two use S2B2. Yes, I can do that. So this user also can do it. Use semester two batch two. Let's use only one of the users. Okay. Right. Let's use this one. Uh, semester two user two. This is semester two user one. Okay. I'm using semester two user one. You can see the username here. Right. Uh, now let's see whether you can see the tables show tables yes i can see the table now let's see whether i can select employees select all from employees you can see it says select command is not allowed to you because you are not you have the access to the basic access to the table, but you don't have any access to do anything with that. Select, insert, update, nothing. 
uh, that is where now we have created the users uh, of course i gave the basic access using the tool to make it faster but now we are going to i'm going to explain how to give those access so giving ac select access to employee table giving insert access to employee table how to re remove that access so that is what we are going to discuss so that is called authorization okay right so right so it's very easy uh, you have to give grant right select insert to update uh, then you have to say uh, which table and to which user it's very easy okay so let's do say grant it's very easy grant say select and select on right, on employee right, employee to semester two user one okay semester two user one grant select on employee to semester two user one okay we have to give the database name also our database is uh, our database is s2b1 okay s2b1 dot employee to semester two user one not to semester two user two okay now, now let's see i'm using the root account because the root account has the access okay so this is root okay All right now let's see okay now i have given the select access to the semester two uh, s2 u1 now let's see whether we can do it. I think we have to log off and login. Uh, this is S2U1. S2U1. Right, now let's see whether we can run the select command. Still not. Right, still not. Uh, then we'll log off and login. Right, log off and login. Quit. Right, S2U1. Use. Yes, use uh, S two batch B one. Our table database name is what? S two B one, right? S two B one, right? Uh, right. So we gave the S two B one employee select, right? Select all from employee uh, now you can now you can okay uh, now let's see whether we, we give it give it gave it only to the s1 u1 not to the s2 u2 L let's quit this guy also quit uh, now let's log in that is s2 u2 okay s2 u2 say use s2 b1 Okay, so the other guy is also in S two B one. Now let's see, right? S two B one. Select. May I do na? Select all from employee. May I do na? Right. So you can see, still this guy can't. S two U two user has not given access, but we gave it only to the uh, S two U uh, one. Okay. So I can now the S2 U1 can select, but still it can't do any update or something like that. Okay, so let's uh, go to S2 U1 again. So this is S2 U1, and let's see whether we can update. Update employee. Okay, update employee. Let's see what other records available. Use to be two so i'm going to next to be one and it's to be one select all from employee this root account right so let's see whether we can update the employee id one salary salary 
set salary equal 100,000 where employee ID equal one. No, it says you can't right? because we have not given the update privilege. We have given only uh, only the insert privilege. Sorry, select privilege. Okay, select privilege. Uh, now let's give the update privilege also. So say grant select is already given. Uh, I will say select comma update or oh, just update because select is already given. Let's say update. Say update comma delete comma insert on S two B one employee to S two U one. Okay. Uh, now if I log off and log in, I, I should be able to do this update. Okay. Let's try to run it and see whether they can get a number again. Ah, uh, hurry. Log in, log off, and they will not on update. Right. Update. Right. Because now let's see whether. Uh, what is the salary of the employee one? Early employee one salary was uh, this one. Now employee one salary must be 100,000. Now it is 100,000. Okay. So that is how you give the access. So you can revoke also. So this is how you revoke. Revoke means taking that access back. Okay. Say revoke. Revoke. Update on say s2b1 employee from now oh, slightly different from s2u1 okay so i'm revoking the update because update i gave right update i gave i'm update say select comma update now i'm revoking update okay from this S2 you want to use. I'm doing it using the root. Right. Right. Now this user should not be able to update it again. Now earlier update was success. Now if I try to do the same update or with say different data, say one. Now you can see update command is command is denied because I just revoke. I revoke. Right. Now we can see it's very simple. Uh, here you grant whatever the accesses on the table to users. You can have multiple users also, U1, comma, U2, here multiple accesses. So similarly, you can revoke here to here from. That's the only difference. Grant become revoke, to become from. This is user list, this is privilege list, comma separated privilege list. Okay. Right. So any questions? All right. So there's a propagation of privileges as well. So that is, if I give a privilege to a user to do something, by default, only that user can do it. But there's a, when you're granting the privilege, if you use with grant option at the end of your privilege uh, user, if you use the with grant option keyword, that means not only that user has that uh, privilege, that user can give that privilege to, the, to another user as well. So that is called propagation of privileges, which is very important feature. For example, say from the head office. So the head office, we have the super user, super admin, super user. Now the head office user, Head of his admin create a user account for the branch, and it is giving those privileges. Now only that account can do it. But if I give those privileges with grant option to the branch manager, assume branch manager, so then branch manager also can create account uh, a new user account and give that privilege to the 
other use account. So that is naturally what we need because then that manager can delegate his privilege to another use account. Okay, so that can be done only if when you are given the accesses, if you have given it with plant option. So this is related to individual access. Maybe you got select access without grant, with grant, insert update without grant. So that means you can give it, you can give select access to another user, but you can't give insert update, insert access to another user because you got to select with grant, maybe insert without grant. Okay. Right. So I hope you got it. Right. So I'm not going to demonstrate that, right on those things because it takes a lot of time. Okay, I'm just explaining. I, I demonstrated all the basic stuff. Right. And also when you revoke, it's not only you are revoking from, say you give a particular access to B with grant option. Now therefore B has given it to, created use and given it to C. Now you revoke it from B then you are revoking it from not only B, you are revoking it from C also. Okay, so that is very important. Okay, so, so that kind of questions they ask in the exam. Okay, right, so make sure you do this particular question at the end of the session, okay? Okay, let's, so anyway, let's do it very quickly. Right, so privileges, now these are some tables, right? A bank maintains database to keep track of customer branch account and loan information. So if I forget it, uh, just I won't tell you. So the next time when we are having database, we will be doing the 2020 paper. So therefore make sure when you are coming to the next session, you have done the 2020 paper. Preferably you take your two hours time slot, take the paper, do it with the clock and see how much you can do. Right, right. It's extremely important. Otherwise, you go to the exams and then only you know that okay, I I am not fast enough. Even for us, it takes at least more two and a half right hours to do it. If we do, if we, if he does if we don't do it in a very serious manner. Okay, so therefore, the, your papers are extremely com complex as well as. Uh, they are very lengthy. So the examiner is very tough on your database subject. Okay. And so keep it, keep it in mind. So therefore make sure you do that before the uh, next class. Okay. Right. So let's read this question. Bank maintains a database to keep track of customer branch account and loan information. Okay. Privileges are granted to users of the database as described in the questions given below and as shown in the authorization diagram. So this authorization diagram. So the DBA has given the authorization to Sarath, Kapila and Aruna. Uh, Sarath has given authorization to Prasad and Kapila also has given authorization to Prasad and Prasad has given some authorization to Pasan. Okay. So now here you can see that Prasad has got some authorization both from both Sarath and Kapila. Okay. Maybe some authorization from Prasad, some other authorization from Kapila. Or maybe same thing you got it from both Sarath and Kapila. Okay. Right. User Saras is able to retrieve the customer details. Sarath can, so that means select customer. Retrieve means select customer is given. And select custom of each customer at the Colombo branch. That means only Colombo branch, along with account number and balance. And is able to update phone and address. Not only retrieve it, Sarat can even update phone and uh, phone and address. Okay. Kapila is able to. Right, write SQL statement to allow this. Now you have to write SQL statement to allow this. So that means what? Grant select on customer. Okay, select on customer. To 
اتسرت اتسرت I don't know why they say customers at the Colombo. I don't know whether we can restrict that. Forget about that, the Colombo. Okay. So grant select on customer to Sarat. Right. So then grant update. I forget to mention one point. When you are giving update uh, access, you have mentioned for which fields as well. It's for delete, insert. It is just the Oh, see, select, insert, and delete. Just you have to specify the table. But it's very, very important when you are giving access to update, you have to mention to which field or which, which set of fields. For example, if you grant update on destination field on employees to use about two and user three, that means these users can update only designation field, nothing else. Right? So likewise, you have to give comma separated which fields can be updated. So that means we can let maybe the user can update this field, but not any other field. So therefore, update privilege is much more fine tuned, right? Fine tuned, okay. Unlike the select, uh, insert, and delete, okay. So we can even restrict certain fields and allow certain fields to be updated, okay. Every time you use update, you have to give the fields. So maybe you have given. Update privilege of the two fields. Later, you can revoke one of the field. Still, the other fields update is uh, allowed. Okay. Right. right. Kapil is able to retrieve the name of the each customer who has loan but does not have an account at the bank. Prasad is able to retrieve following blah, blah, blah. Right. So, and also it's very important if you revoke a particular privilege from Sarat, if Sarat has given to Prasad on that, that, that privilege is also removed from Prasad. And if Prasad has given to Pasan, uh, Pasan also lose that privilege. Privilege comes from Sarat. If anything comes from Kapila, those things are still with Prasad then Pasan. Okay, so that is very important. If something comes from both, then you don't have to worry because just because Sarat is uh, Revoke Sarat's privilege is revoked, still you get it from the Kapila also. Therefore, still Prasad will be able to act, do that particular task and of course the Pasa. Okay. Right. So that is user-based authorization. So you just want to know how to grant particular access privilege to a resource given to a user and how to revoke it from the user or set of users. So the user-based authorization is rarely used unless it is very small, only when it is a very small uh, application, just few tables and only few users, then yes, we can go for user-based authorization. But when you are having a lot of tables, a lot of users, big organizations, we always go for role-based authorization. Okay, role-based authorization. So role-based authorization is much more flexible and it is less work for the database administrators as well. It's very flexible approach. And in role-based authorization, what will happen? Right. So there are, again, you have the users. Give me one minute to open the one note. Again, uh, the okay. You have the Thursday class as well, and so Thursday I will ex I will inform whether Tuesday Thursday student has to attend the Saturday class or not. Okay, because uh, that I will let you know on the Saturday. Uh, so the Thursday class. Okay, anyway, the, the Saturday student have to attend the Thursday class also, right? Both Tuesday and Thursday, because your batch start a little bit later, right? And of course, uh, the Tuesday Thursday students had two days, whereas you had only one day, right? Though it's extended period, usually a little bit uh, lesser time is used, okay? Right. Uh, so that is why you're a little bit behind. 
just one one day behind one day okay right so now in role based authorization this is happen we have users we have users we have resources different different resources say this table that table etc earlier the users were given access to the resources individually so if there are 100 resources you have to give access to all those 100 resources to the user if that user is needed to given that access which is lot of time consuming another user you have to again give those access again one by one but in role based authorization these are the users so let's do it a little bit away and so these are the users once you understand is very easy these are the resources resources means access to the tables etc see these are some users nimal kamal amal then we have something called role in this approach roles say admin role right hr user okay finance user hr user and hr manager like this now what we do is earlier we gave access to the users this time I'm, we are giving access to the roles maybe admin can do anything but hr can access only this and this one finance can access only this one or maybe finance can access this one and this one this one okay and maybe finance can access this one also so hr can access these two and now the different roles are given access to the resources and now users are assigned roles maybe this user is a hr user this user is having both hr user and finance user likewise multiple role use a uh, role can be given access to multiple resources access to resource can be given to multiple roles and user can be assigned multiple roles so therefore it's very flexible and the idea is if a resource is given access to a role and if a user has that role that user has access to that resource say you are giving access to a manager and you are a manager so therefore you have access okay so there is idea so therefore now what we have to do is when you create user you have to assign roles one no multiple and these roles are given access to the uh, resources and their operations like insert update delete. that is the idea then indirectly the users get the access and of course at any time users role can be removed and access can be removed to from a role as well that is the idea okay it's very very important to understand this right now let's see how to do this now i am going to get all the access uh, the table level access from the uh, user one and user two okay i am i am using this one to make it easier Say user accounts. Say S one U one edit privilege. Okay, nothing is given. Right, nothing is given. What about S one B two? S one S sorry S two sorry S two U two. Okay. So S two U two is Also having only this set, like nothing, not nothing. So that means it's both cannot do anything. Both cannot do do anything uh, other than accessing the database. Okay, databases. Right. Now we are going to create a role. Now we have two users. Right. Now we are going to create a role. So let's create a role called.
say create role. Okay, let's create role. Create role. Let's say manage. Same here, manage. Right, so let's create the role. I'm using the super user to create the role. Uh, that is the root user. Create role MGR. Okay, create role MGR. Now the role is created. Okay, role is created. Now I am going to give this, assign this role to the first user. Right, that is S. S two U one user. How to do that? It's very easy. You have to say set role role name to the user. Right? Set role the user role name. Oh, that is to activate okay sorry uh so let's see how to set the role right grant so we have to say grant role name to user okay right so let's do it let me copy paste okay right so grant say mgr manager role to say s2 u1 so make sure you give it with admin option otherwise sometimes the user will not get the access still okay so now i have a role called mgr i have assigned that role to semester 2 s2 u1 user okay let's do that also uh, i'm going to do this using the uh, Super user. So MGR only is assigned to the S2U1 user. Okay. Right. So now still that manager role has no access privilege. Okay, no access privilege. Now I am going to give that access privilege to the role. Right. So how to do that? So that is you have to say, say grant. Let's say grant, grant, say select, select on employee, which, de which database, S2B1 employee, semester 2 batch 1 em databases employee table, select privilege, to, now it is a role not to the user mgr at mgr okay All right now let's do that also now s2u1 has the manager role mgr role and mgr role has select access to the employee table okay i'm doing all those things with my root account S two B one okay spelling mistake employee okay right so now we have to do another thing otherwise your user will not be getting that access so now let's uh, uh, log out and log in because. Now let's see whether my user can do that. Uh, what is the user? S2U1. S2U1. So let's say show tables. Okay. So let's say show. So let's say use that just double check. Use uh, what is the tape database we gave access to? S2B1. Use. 
is to be one right show tables let's see whether we can do uh, select select because i gave the select role to select uh, on employee table to the mgr role mgr role is given to the this particular user select all from employee oh, now you can see that that you, this user can do it okay so now what about the other user other user is not given any role okay other user is not given any role uh, say say use s to b1 let's say select all from employee right that user can't do it okay that user can't do it. now let's revoke the you can do two things either revoke manager role from the user then the usage must not be able to do the select or you can revoke that select access from the manager role in both the cases your user must not be able to do the select anymore okay let's revoke the manager role uh, from the user how to do that same thing revoke mgr from from uh, s2u1 because earlier s2u1 was able to do that right revoke mgr from s2u1 okay right so the idea is you create the role right you can create give it a name right? likewise you can create any 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 number of roles okay so then you grant these privileges to the role say select insert update delete on product table to product manager grant even you can use it for uh, use access to user creation as well okay so then you grant that role to the user say grant overall manager to the user one now whatever the access given to the role is given to the user indirectly okay so that is the idea so and at any time you can take the role out of a user the moment you take the role maybe the user has three roles now we revoke one role then access given to that uh, the access privileges of that role is no longer with the user now because we, we took that role out and also while you are having that role if you take a particular access privilege from the role now the user is also losing that particular access because though he, the user has that role now we have take that access from the role that is how it work okay so at any time you can drop role so that means all those users having that role are no longer having that role because the role is no longer there so what we are going to do is we are going to stop at this point we are done with your syllabus okay so next time when we are doing in the database i will do this uh, practical session again just the this portion it will take 10 minutes then we will be doing the 2020 paper okay 2020 paper